Good morning. You are all welcome to today's service, and um, I beg you to open your heart. Where we are coming from is longer than where we are going. To the wise, that should bring you to soberness. Where we are coming from is longer than where you are going. This means also your life. How do you know how much of your life is left? How much? Yes. It is very easy to criticize. It takes talent to create. Tell you never. It is very easy to criticize. It takes talent to create. And we may sit down, please. To criticize, very easy. You yourself, some of us, that's our profession, criticizing others. But simple question, what have you created yourself? that we should also criticize you. Very easy to criticize. Look in your life. See before you. See your home. See your children. See your destiny. See around you and you. But look, what you have achieved is less. Your criticism is more. Why? Discuss. What you have achieved is less. Your criticism is more. Why? I want you to think this morning. You are accelerating very fast, looking forward, but going reverse. Tell your neighbor. You are accelerating very fast, looking forward, but going in reverse. Discuss. If you can understand that, you know what this means. accelerating and you're looking forward but you're going reverse hmm. yes junior Yes, please, help us. Thank you, Prophet, for this grace. As, as you are teaching now that we are accelerating very fast and we are achieving less, that is exactly, even things that brought me down is, is busy coming back. And uh, to when I look at what I've achieved now mm -hmm. and what I've lost now, mm -hmm. is bigger. What I have now, as we're talking, the way God has come through for me now, if I had put them in order, I could have gone far now. Thank you. Thank you. People are planning. This week, this, I've got friends, I've got what and what. This is not progress. 
you have been doing this for how long? You are looking forward, accelerating, looking forward, but this acceleration is taking you back. So what's the purpose? What's the purpose? That's why we are frustrated. Thank you, sir. Hear words of wisdom this morning, then pay attention, please. It is never too late to obey God. All this acceleration going back, but you are looking forward. It cannot be because you're obeying God. It is never too late to obey God. The, the source of all blessing. Also, that's a source of all destruction. When you obey, it's success. When you don't obey, you know what happens. It's never too late to obey God. Is anything too hard for God? Mm -hmm. Then look now. What do you say? Genesis eighteen fourteen. Is there anything too hard for God? Yes, please. Genesis eighteen verse fourteen. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Thank you. Let's clap for Jesus. But the way you look, the way you are amplifying your life as if there are things in your life that God cannot do for you. That's what we are seeing. That's what you are displaying. That's what you are displaying. World over. It is all you have you is strength and power. It's not by his spirit. That's why you are tired. That's why you're exhausted. Is there anything too hard with God? If it's not, it's never too late. To start obeying God. People watching by television, you are here and all over, wherever this broadcast is alive, you will never understand God until you obey God. Tell her never. You will never understand God until you obey God. Again, please. You will never understand God until you obey God. These are words of wisdom. Because you, you think it's reading Bible. Reading Bible that you don't understand. Praying po, 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 that you don't even know what you are praying. Obey God. Obey God. What is our problem now? 
those who are struggle to obey God. You have put, stop putting God Almighty on the level of your thinking. Tell your neighbor. Stop putting God Almighty on the level of your thinking. Again, please. Stop putting God Almighty on the level of your thinking. That's where your problem is. You are putting God on your level of your thinking. That's why in your thinking, you are commanding God. In your thinking, you are shouting at God. In your thinking, this God can't do. <laughs> the source of creation, you say he cannot do. Your thinking is not proper. Go where you stay and think through what I'm teaching. That's your problem. When you look at you, you are limited. God is unlimited. So how do you compare the two? When you have no money, you think God is broke. Tell you never. When you have no money, you think God is broke. When you are sad, you think God is sad. What caused you to be sad? Why is it that every time God Almighty is bypassing you, why is God bypassing you? You don't want to face the obvious in your life. He will continue bypassing you. He it will. It's painful, but that's your choice. God cannot correct your will. You have to surrender your will. Tell your neighbor. God cannot correct your will. You have to surrender your will. Again. God cannot correct your will. You have to surrender your will. That's why beginning of your problem. You think you know better than God. Created being, arguing with his creator. <laughs> he cannot correct your will. If you want to smoke stuff that is stronger than cigarette, it's your will. You can't say it's God. You want to go for alcohol, it's your will. It's not God. But all this that you are doing, there's an end to it. Misery. You cannot be doing all these things and think you are happy. You are not truthful to the obvious. Your life is an obvious classroom, but you are refusing to learn from your classroom. Tell your neighbor. Your life is an obvious classroom, but you are refusing to learn from the classroom. You don't have the heart of obedience. You want abundance. You want God blessing. You want all this from God Almighty. But you don't have a heart of obedience.
when you look at your neighbor, when you look at uh, family members, when you look at friends you have, uh, what you do, simple question, can reveal your grouping. Are you humble and willing to learn? Ask your neighbor. <laughs> Are you humble and willing to learn? I can't hear you. Are you humble and willing to learn? You have come this way because of that statement. You are not humble and you are not willing to learn. According to you, you know. If you say you know, I'll ask you a question. When are you going to die? Do you know the date? Discuss. If you say you know, when are you going to die? Do you know the date? Do you know the hour? You say you know. That's why you continue disobeying because you think you know. These are words of wisdom. These are words whereby we sit alone and you go through. Words, these are life words. They will transform you. These are statements that reach you. You can hide now. When you go home, you realize things are in a mess. Your life is in a mess. You are just putting up a front. A lot of us are mistaken. Because we drive, we think we are successful. Tell a neighbor. A lot of us are mistaken. Because we drive, we think we are successful. What you have Right now, it is success, but you are not successful. Tell your neighbor. What you have right now, it is success, yes. but you are not successful. No. An event happened that you are successful, but your life is not successful. It just brought success. What you did, it brought you success. But you are not successful. You bought a car. Success. Maintaining and all and all, it will show you that you are not successful. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Tell your neighbor. <laughs> That's all. But you, with your warped mind, you drive everywhere thinking you are living a successful life. No capital, no. No. In fact, they say what you call success, it will bring more misery. Because you are not humble and you are not willing to learn. Do you have a royal heart and a simple mind? Ask your neighbor slowly. Do you have a royal heart and a simple mind? Just your mind is complicated. Your heart, disloyalty. <laughs> your mind is complicated. And you are refusing to learn from others. You can see 
This one seems to have a balanced life. Let me get closer to learn. You, you get closer to instruct. And that's why people leave you alone. People leave you alone. And you say, I don't know how to maintain friendship. Your heart. Your heart. And your mind. The mind. It's not simple. You are talking things far above you. And you say in Jesus' name, tell never. You are talking things far above you and you say in Jesus' name. This is madness. Mad, total madness. You are all here and those by television seeking for success. You didn't come here to be taught how to fail. You want to know ways of God to succeed. Principles of God to succeed because God uses principles. You don't just shout, oh, 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 then you have. You are lying. It won't happen that way. Simple question this morning. Did you ever wonder what stops you from getting to your goals? Did you ever wonder what stops you from getting to your goals of life? If you fail to answer that, how can he expect you to succeed? You don't know what is stopping you from getting to your goals. You're blaming everyone. No, 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 we've got different goals. We've got different goals. You have achieved in blaming people. You have achieved in painting people black. But where is your success? What have you achieved with your life? Where can we see the goals of your life? Working is not a goal. Working is a normal process of a human being. It's not a goal. You should go beyond this working to doing something. Now you, you say, a goal is I'm working. Ah. <laughs> Look at this one. Tell him about her. You, you say, a goal is I'm working. <laughs> that's, your, that's your goal. As you are working, if I may ask with your goal, how much are you going to achieve in 12 months with your goal? You who say I'm working. Tell anybody. You who say I'm working, how much are you going to achieve in 12 months with your goal? Discuss. You people working with goal. And you are even getting annoyed when so-called promotion pass you by. Because that's your goal, promotion. <laughs> Tell a neighbor. You are even getting annoyed when so-called promotion passes you by because that's your goal, promotion. Goal of life, promotion. We are mediocre. We have not started. 
why God created you. I didn't say because I said God created you, you want to be pastor. No. No. There's something that God created you for, and God wants you to succeed in that. Yes, sir. What can you say with that simple question? Thank you, sir. Uh, it, it is in, thank, thank you. It is indeed, this is uh, the words of wisdom. Um, you have just brought something that is from the bottom of the tip, I mean of the pit on the surface, that now I see that I was going nowhere. I, was, I thought I was going forward, only to find that I was reversing. Yes. And I, ho I held or hold on unto what seems like a success. But I have got nothing to count to say. For example, if I say I'm not working tomorrow, for the next six months, how will I survive? Are you then successful? I'm not successful. People. Their eyes are blinded. That's why even when you know you are exhausted, yeah. you cannot stop working because you've got nothing else to do. Yeah. More so, you have cultivated more appetite for good things. So you are a slave to your appetite. Your appetite is your master. You said a very good point. If you stop now, in six months, are we going to see you same like this? Have you seen? That's the first time you say this bank is bad because I've given you warning to come and take their house. But when you look at your life, you are living as if this house is yours without thinking. I've not finished paying this house. But you are living like an Induna. Achieve something. Hmm? Achieve. Achieve. Be successful. No talking success. Everyone can. Thank you, sir. After saying all this, title of message. Tell you never. After saying all this, title of message. This is a message now. Shine. Your success doesn't hurt anyone. Say it again. Shine. Your success doesn't hurt anyone. Because that's your problem there. Yeah. My success in my calling doesn't hurt anyone. But do I have opposition? Yes. Do I have haters? Yes. But my success doesn't hurt anyone. I'm not succeeding because I'm getting from someone's portion. Tell the neighbor. The prophet is not succeeding because he's getting from someone's portion. Same you. You are, go you are going to succeed. And you should shine. Shine. Because you are not hurting anyone. Yeah. 
We are so ignorant. As you move forward in life, you are likely to experience other people's envy and resentment. It's natural. It is natural. As I'm talking some of you right now, your so-called best friend stopped being a best friend when you moved up. That's it. It's no more. Somebody whom you used to buy coffee, tea, whatever, when you moved up, you say, Les, I want to buy you coffee. She says, or he says, I have my own money. They are angry with you. Tell your neighbor. They are angry yes. This has come about because of success. Your success. And this shouldn't bother you. It has got nothing to do with you. Now you, you say, oh, they are going to talk about me. Oh, so become a failure. Anyone who desires to move up, expect envy, resentment, bad-mouthing, bad opposition, opposition. All these should not stop you. Amen. I can't hear you. Amen. All these should not bring you on the level where this opposition is coming from. Don't come down. Don't come down. Resentment is painful. I'm, I'm talking about you people who resent people who are successful. Not who make success. No. You resent people who are successful. successful. Barrier breaker. You hurt them. Achievers. Because if I can ask you now, with your life, are you an achiever? Discuss. Ask with your, your life, ask. are you an achiever? <laughs> Don't look down. I said, talk with your mask on. <laughs> are you an achiever? But look. You, are, you, who is not achieving, you are talking against achievers. You want to achieve in life. Amen. That's it. You have put barrier for yourself. You don't pull down achievers. You learn from achievers. Not pulling down. No. When you find people pulling down an achiever, flee from that area. I don't care whether it's your family meeting, friend meeting, what you say. No, 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 no. They, you are saying something that should not be spoken here. This lady, she's an achiever. This man is an achiever. This young man is an achiever. Let's not talk about this. Do you say so? Or you add what we didn't even know.
to get rid of resentment that is very painful in you. Radiate happiness. Oh, thank you. Somebody heard me. I said to turn around this pain of resentment. Radiate happiness. If I may ask you now. Simple question, but huge implication. Ask your neighbor nicely, because the question will provoke things. <laughs> Ask them nicely, please. Are you hard to hate? Are you hard to hate? It is difficult. Are you difficult to hate? Discuss. Uh. Or are you very easy to hate? I can't hear you. Wh which one is, are you? Make it your point in life to be difficult to be hated. Difficult to be hated. I don't mean they will talk well, all of them. No. Others, even if you got, they got nothing against you, they still find something, according to them, because their mind is warped. That's all. And if you bring them to say, okay, I can see you are oozing with hatred towards me. What have I done? They've got nothing to say. But they are in increasing membership to hate. And the members also don't ask, why do we hate her? Why do we hate him? They cannot explain. Now, because of this, that's why your life is a dwarf. You talk success but you smell poverty. Tell your neighbor. You talk success, but you smell poverty. Poverty, you smell it. Even if someone wear a jacket, even if someone wear big hair, you can still smell poverty. This dressing is of poverty. It's not of success. No. Pastor Zach. Yes, sir. Thank you, Father. Your teaching is painfully true. We, I talk success, but I'm smelling of poverty. So what are we achieving? Truthfully, we are achieving nothing, Dad, until one acknowledges that what I've been saying and doing has been empty. Yes. Mind you, you already have children, and children are looking at you. They think this is success when they look at you. They think you are a product of success. So if you are like this, your child will be worse because everything gets worse, big, bigger, biggest. So then they'll be biggest in smelling poverty. By talking success. 
everything big starts small. That is. Become hard to hit by smiling. Smiling. Do you need money to smile? No. You just wake up in bed and you're smiling. That's all. Word of admiration. Word of admiration. I don't need you for those. I don't need you to smile. I smile on my own. That's how as I walk, even in the prayer bush, I smile. Looking at God creation. In the night, I smile. God, you are awesome. Stars, moon, and all. I, I, I smile. Because God has been merciful to me. Great God. Because I don't deserve this grace. I don't deserve this mercy. I don't deserve this goodness of God. So I just smile. God, you are someone else. Smiling. I don't have money, I smile. I don't have work at the present moment, I smile. I smile. Be identified as someone who has got abundance Hallelujah. of smiles. Because happiness is contagious. Happiness is contagious. That's why you see happy people, the good people around them. Not because you're crooking them. No. They just, the people are in darkness. When you come around because you got this happiness and all, there's light around the place. You don't bring heaviness, you bring happiness. Happiness. And you got a willing hand and an open heart. Are you that person? Hard to hurt. Willing hands and open heart. heart. Right now, simple question. Why have you dimmed your light instead of becoming a beacon of light? Ask your neighbor and discuss. Why have you dimmed your light instead of becoming a beacon of light? To others. To others. Your light is dim. Others can see it. They can't. It's a becoming a beacon of light to others. Those who are in darkness, they run to you. That's a beacon of light. Oh, that lady, she's wonderful. You, you need a word of encouragement, please advise you go to that lady. You'll be revived. She'll give you, she'll help you to find yourself. So, such a person, the one I'm talking about, he, your success is not just important to you. It is also important to all other people you are able to help. Say that to your neighbor. Your success is not just important to you. It is also important to all other people you are able to help. That's it. That's why people are concerned of your success. Because we know your success, we are all going to benefit. Right now, how many have benefited? Yes, sir. Lady, sorry. <laughs> Yes, 
Yes, Daddy. Yeah? I'm saying thank you, Daddy, for the opportunity. Thank you. Um, my success is not just important to me. It is also important to all the people I'm able to help. So if I can realize that I can step up. You can what? I can step up. So what, are, what has been stopping you to step up and step off? <laughs> it's because, Daddy, um, I had a command, a God. I thought that um, I'm in charge of everything. Ah. Now you have realized. Yes. That what? <laughs> that I'm not in charge, Daddy. I don't know anything. So what I have to do is to surrender my will to God. Amen. Thank you, my daughter. And welcome from Eastern Cape Country. <laughs> Thank you. How many here just want to have a good, simple exercise because it's hot? And uh, I like people to be alive and awake. How many here right now, by show of hand, they feel a sense of scarcity in their life, feel a sense of inadequacy in their life, by show of hand? Okay. Let's see. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sense of scarcity, sense of inadequacy is the opposite of success. Tell your neighbor. Sense of scarcity, sense of inadequacy mm. is the opposite of success. <laughs> Say that again. Sense of scarcity, mm -hmm. sense of inadequacy is the opposite of success. The opposite is the opposite of success. But you've been telling others you are successful. Yes, my daughter in red. Thank you very much, Dad. Uh, Thank you. For everything that you have given us this morning. Um, from the words of wisdom up to now, I, I'm even shaking because I'm not sure which one to actually pick for myself. Almost everything that you have said have located where I am. But I'm very grateful because I know that I don't have to be stuck where I am right now. Amen. There's something that I must be able to do. And uh, I know I'm actually not successful yeah. because there's a sense of scarcity in my life. And uh, now I know and that I've been uh, accelerating very fast, you know, go looking forward but going reverse. I, I don't so, know how you have been managing. That's why I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm so exhausted. I know I just need to to take time and really look at my life. There's, it's not too late to start doing the right thing. Uh -huh. Thank you, Dad. I said it's not too late to start obeying, obeying God. God. Yes. Thank you, Dad. One with God cannot get lost. You, you say you got God, but you are getting lost. How come? Discuss. One Thank with you. God cannot get lost. Yes. You, you say you're with God, but you're getting lost. How, How come? You're an amazing person. How? No. It can't be. It's impossible. Have you looked at your hand? Look at your hand today. You, you, you know that you got fingerprint there. That is unique. Are you aware? Question. Your unique fingerprints has, be, has it been 
printed on others. Can we see your unique fingerprints on others? Why? Because immediately your unique fingerprint is on Junior, who have my fingerprint in his life. Victor, who have my fingerprint in his life. Whoever come across by me, who have my fingerprint. Mention people who have your fingerprint. Apart from your family member. Because you are born together. To be successful, meet your opposition and overcome your opposition. Tell the neighbor. To be successful, yes. meet your opposition and overcome your opposition. What happens with your life, Junior, when you meet, when you hear opposition is coming your way? What happens? What do you do? Thank you, Prophet, for this grace. If, I'm, if I see opposition coming my way, yeah. I panic because the teaching that you are teaching us that we cannot succeed mm -hmm. if we cannot follow God. Yes. No matter how hard we pray or walk, if we don't have, if we don't, like me, I have too many bad habits that anytime I do it, I know that it's going to take me back. But I keep on doing it. And that's what I was I said earlier that if if I have dropped even some of them, I could have gone far now because I'm just talking about success. Why I, I have not succeeded? Yes. Yes. But you have been talking success to your friends, and others are your disciples of success. Tell you never. You, you have, have been, been talking. talking. You have been talking success to your friends and others are your disciples of success. The type of success you have, you have disciples. Tell your neighbor. The type of success you have, you have disciples. You can imagine. You can imagine you, you having disciples of the type of success you have. Hey. Thank you, sir. Can I tell you here, because I'm also mixing here, your personal life, your business life, your social life. Is that okay? Opposition is not a sign of a bad idea. I can't hear you. Opposition is not a sign of a bad idea. Opposition is not a sign of a faulty goal. It's not faulty. Your goal you want to achieve is not faulty because you have seen opposition. No. Opposition is not because the one opposing you is a faulty person, is a bad person, is an inadequate person, capital no. No. It is absolutely natural and healthy sign of movement, opposition. Tell your neighbor. Opposition is absolutely is absolutely natural and healthy sign of movement. Yes. Is showing you are moving. 
is showing you are going towards your goal. Simple. <laughs> very, very simple. When you encounter opposition, it means you have made an impact. I can't hear you. When you encounter Louder. opposition. When you encounter opposition. Wait, wait, wait. It's you I'm talking to. When you encounter opposition, what does it mean? Pardon? You have made an impact. Look. People don't make any impact in life. Who bothers them? No one. No one. No one at all. When you encounter opposition, it means you have knocked on the door of opportunity. Louder. Amen. Louder. Amen. Don't hate opposition. If there is, there is no opportunity, you won't have a opposition. Let's just go. Let's go. Who can write what I want to write? <laughs> what is this? Impossible. Huh? Kado? Hello? I can't hear. Why are you doubting? Can you hear a plan? Can you see? What? Okay. That means when you read this wrong, what this means, I am possible. <laughs> Tell your neighbor. Hello? Impossible means what? I am possible. So what has been your problem? There you are, sitting down there. You are saying what about your life? Impossible. To change. Impossible to prosper. Impossible to whatever. Impossible to marry. At my age. <laughs> when you bring it impossible, then achievement has started. Yeah. Achievement has started. You are using the word what? Impossible. The same word telling you, I'm possible. I'm going to achieve. Amen. And in fact, you have been told truth right there. But you complicate your own life. Thank you, my daughter. Thank you, Pastor. Huh? Remember. Your past is not what holds you back. It's your lack of imagination regarding where you can go and how you can get there. Remember, your past is not what holds you back. It is 
your lack of imagination regarding where you can go and how you can get there. Huge. It's also a bridge, this. Yes. Say it. Read up. Remember, your past is not what holds you back. It's your lack of imagination regarding where you can go and how you can get there. That's all. That's all. I wrote a lot of you right now. You know more about the past. That's why you say the future is impossible. You got no imagination regarding where you can go. Nothing. And how to get there. Nothing. Where you can go and how to get there. You're lacking imagination. Second, remember, successful people learn from their past. Tell your neighbor. Successful people learn from their past. Unfulfilled people live in their past. Tell your neighbor. Unfulfilled people live in their past. Anyone here unfulfilled, you are living in the past. Successful people, they learn from their past. It's when you know who is the success. Learning from their past, they are succeeding. Unfulfilled people live their whole entire life in their past. The time I was in high school, the time at the university, the time I was 20 years, the time, how old now? 42. You're talking about what? 20 years. You're a failure. You're scared to imagine your future. A lot of people, when they imagine or think of their future, they, they become blunt. They fear their future. They fear how, how the future will be. They are scared, scared. Because they enjoy their past. In their past, there was no problem. They were being fed. <laughs> now they got their own house. They're scared. The Bible says only a fool says the past was better. Because the future is better than the past. Always. The future is always better than the past. Remember number three. It is easy to criticize. It takes talent to create. Tell the neighbor. It is easy to criticize. It takes talent to create. Let's all stand up and pray. Put your book down. You want to pray, meaning prayer. You know? Not just words. No. Change all that today. That's why I put prayer at last. Because if we started with prayer, nothing was going to change. 
mean it. The first prayer item today is appreciate the wonderful people God has placed in your life. They've been wonderful people that God has put in your life. Name them one by one. Appreciate them. Somebody who told you there's impact. Somebody who, who gave you money to go to school. Somebody who fed you when you had not. This is a moment. This is a person whom God brought at the point of crisis to take you out of the muddy clay. One, two, three. Jesus. Louder. Not yet. One, two, three. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Prayer. Appreciate those people. With all your heart. Without them, you are not going to be here now. Without them, you are not going to be who you are now. It's because of those people. Appreciate them. Name them. Thank you, Jesus. The teachers who taught you, the headmaster who gave you word of encouragement, your sister, your brother, your cousin, your grandfather, your grandmother, you have forgotten all these people that they were put there by God to help you to become who you are today. Prayer. Appreciate them. You've been hating them instead of appreciating them. They kept in, you, in their house. You said they kept me like a slave. But here you are now. See how you have come up. They gave you money to go to school. Yes, it wasn't enough, but that's what made you to be where you are now. Appreciate them. Mention them name by name. Some of your friends are no longer with you because when you went up, you forgot about them instead of appreciating them. They gave their time. They gave, they gave you their love. Yes, it is God who put them, who placed them in your life. You did not choose them. God chose them for you. Appreciate them. And even ask the Holy Spirit to remind you about the people having forgotten. Prayer, I can't hear your voice. The pastors who encouraged you, one word, they are there for you to know God better, but you have forgotten them. The grade one teacher who taught you how to write your name, but you have forgotten them. All those people came into your life to build you. It is God who put them there. It's not you. You are not yet the end product. No. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. We have prayed. Amen. Even when we finish, there's prayer mountain. You go there and continue. Because that's when, when you appreciate everyone whom God has put in your life, you'll be impossible, very hard to hurt. Because you're appreciating everything and everyone. You'll be difficult. You'll be a difficult person to be hated. Now it's very easy. Number two, 
God to grant you grace that you may never live to be useless. Because God brought all those people in your life so that you don't end being useless. So now you ask for God to grant you grace that you may never live to be useless. One, two, three. Jesus. Louder. Jesus. Louder. Jesus. Prayer. Prayer. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. We have prayed. Number three, pray to love your neighbor and to offer prayers for your enemies. Love your and to offer uh, to prosper them, to give them good health, to become better people. To, to, to know Christ, to save Christ, that's for your enemies. Neighbor, I mean anyone, Muslim, Islam, whatever, is your neighbor. Neighbor doesn't mean your cousin. No. Any tribe, any tongue, any color, that's, I love my neighbor. And I pray for all my enemies. One, two, three. Yes. Jesus. Yes. Jesus. We start again because of the enemies you are going down. One, two, three. Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Uh huh. Jesus. Prayer. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We have prayed. Amen. We pray one more time for our enemy that God remove all barriers that made, made them fail, all cases that they are under, that God bless them more than you. Prayer. enemy. God to bless him more than you. To have abundance so that the heart will change to love you. Prayer. To have no sickness in their families. Prayer for all your enemies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All your enemies, known and unknown, declare blessings over them. Declare abundance over them. 
Declare love over them. Prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. We have prayed. Now, because you have favored your enemies, you have blessed your enemies, known and unknown, pray now for you. Cage of disappointment to lose it now. Cage of setback to be loosened over your life. Cage of failure to be loosened over your life. Cage of sickness and disease to be loosened over your life. Cage of financial inadequacy to be loosened. These are cages you have been in. Hello. Pray now. Those cage to open and to be loosened. Cage of disappointment. One, two, three. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Another one. This is your freedom. This is what you've been praying for for, for time immemorial. When you became a Christian, this is the day you wanted to have freedom. This cage to break. So this is not the way to offer Jesus' name. It, it should be different. Favor yourself now. One, two, three. Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Louder. Jesus. Prayer and counsel. Open those cage of disappointment. Loosen that cage of setbacks. Prayer. Loosen that cage of failure. Of fear. Sickness and disease. That cage. That cage of financial inadequacy. Prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. We have prayed. Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Now, you have to break that yoke of Satan over your life. Those spirits generational or your own personal one, family spirits, break any yoke of Satan over your life, over your family, over your children, over your business, over your destiny. 
This is serious business. You are not wrestling with flesh and blood, but powers, principalities, ruler spirits that have been there from creation. They were not born after South Africa independence. No, they were there. From the fall of our first father, Adam, they were there. So that yoke you've been carrying from generation to generation to generation. Let this be the end of this generational spirit. Amen. Let be the end of this poverty that has been in the family. Amen. Sickness that has been in the family. Amen. Premature death Amen. that has been in family. Premature. When people reach 40, do, 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 do. When people reach financially, when they reach, when 30, 40, they are right. When they are going towards retirement, nothing. They are talking history. Not that living abundance, no. Break all that. You know your family better. You know what God has shown you in your family lineage. You know what type of blood right now you are carrying. And you know you are only waiting, you are the next one to be a victim of this blood issue. It's time to offer prayer, crying. What? You cannot break yoke of Satan. Go away, you Satan. Go away. You have made me misery. Ah, I'm all by myself now because of you, Satan. What? This is to fight to win. One, two, Three! Jesus! 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 Louder! One, two, three! Jesus! 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 Prayer! Prayer! Yoke of Satan to be broken over your life over my life, over your family, over your children, over your destiny, over your business, over everything that is yours. Prayer. says impossible, impossible, prayer. <laughs> Lift up your voice today. It is your day of redemption, prayer. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. We have prayed. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap for him. Let's clap for him. Let's clap for him. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Point number seven. I don't know whether writing point. It's okay. Point number six, in fact. Point six. Jesus Christ to strengthen your inner desire for him. Yes. Eh? Yes. Because we are failing now. Our inner desire for Jesus is not there. 
You have desire for other things that bring you harm. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. When you have inner desire for him, you don't look at what is happening. You look at the cause and where you are going. When you know you got Jesus, this is where I'm looking to where I'm going. One, two, three. Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Louder. One, two, three. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Prayer. To strengthen you. Jesus, to strengthen your inner desire for him. Your inner desire for him. To love him to serve him, to worship him, to sacrifice for him. Prayer. Prayer. Point number seven. This is very serious one. All these points are serious. But this one, very close to me. Jesus Christ to make you willing to change and to challenge yourself to become the greatest person you can be. Amen. To challenge yourself. Jesus, to make you willing so that you change and to Challenge yourself to become the greatest person you can be. Amen. That can only happen when you are willing and you are changing by cooperating with Jesus. One, two, three. Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Prayer. Prayer. Willing to change and to challenge yourself to become the greatest person you can be. Prayer. Hallelujah. Shh. Hallelujah. Glory to God is the title. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, we have prayed. Amen. Let's clap for him. Let's clap for him more and more. He's mm, awesome. He's holy. He's righteous. He's loving. There's none like him. He is the rose of Sharon. He is a bright and morning star. The Alpha and Omega. The lily of the valley. He is who he is. Clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This one you got to sing for him. All of you got a song for him. Thank God for believing in you. Come on now, sing a song for him. 
sing a song for him. Thank God for believing in you. Come on, sing a song for him. Your own song. Your own song. God has believed in you. Hallelujah. I can't hear a song. Thank you, Lord. God believing in you. Uh, sing him a song, man. Worship for him. Give God a sweet aroma of a song. Louder, louder with your song. Hallelujah. You can dance. You can do anything. But it is all to God's glory. It's all to God's glory. It's all to God's glory. It's all to God's glory and honor. God has believed in you. And he still believes in you. God believes in you. God believes in you. Hallelujah. Sing him a song. Yes, yes, yes. Sing a song. It sounds like sound of many waters. Sing, sing. Oh, hallelujah. Sing him a song. You're a child before God. You are God's creation. You are God's child. You are a princess in the kingdom of God. You are from the royal family. You are, you are, you are. Don't allow anyone to bring you down. You are a new generation. You are a new generation. God has made it possible. God has made it possible. God has made it possible. Because God believes in you. God believes in you. God believes in you. Raise up your song now. Let's hear your song. Sing on, sing on, sing on. Let all the heaviness go. Let all your sorrow go. Have the mind of Christ as you sing this morning. Gain that mind that you lost, the mind of Christ. Become a child. He created you. It's him who knows why you are created. And he believes in you. God believes in you. That's all that matters. God believes in you. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we have sung to him. Amen. There's a chorus that is universal. You can go to any country. You can go to any tribe. You can go to any tongue. Anywhere. This song, everybody knows it. Hallelujah. Take it up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, on point number nine, you have to cheer yourself on. God made you exactly how you need to be in order to succeed in what you need to achieve. You are the exactly person, the exactly person he made you to be in order to succeed in what you need to achieve. 
Thank him for that. Just thank him. Tired. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Can you see you get tired? 30 minutes prayer. Okay, now, this is in conclusion. Listen to all your doubts only after you have completed your project. Listen to all your only after you have completed my project. Don't listen to doubt before you start your project. Listen to your doubt when? Only after I have completed my project. Thank for Jesus. And shalom, shalom, shalom.